It's a whole different ball game for us because of our population, and so uh, what we need uh, it to give is a process. And I think that we might consider doing it sort of like the um, the the primary caucuses started out like that, because they have the task of selecting their delegates and also uh, for generating resolutions. And so we might proceed along those lines. But during the summer consultation, what needs to come forth first is do we think it's really time to convene? <coughs> it's a small group here tonight. But we should go ahead and uh, we should go ahead and take a vote. Who here thinks that it's time that we take this step? Yeah. Who thinks that it's time that we go ahead and convene? Stand. Or dozen. Any opposed? Any opposed that have something to say as to why we shouldn't go forward with it? Okay. Well, here's what I would like to ask. When we were having those, you remember those town hall meetings that we had following the um, the economic collapse of 2008. I don't know how y'all's went, but, but we weren't allowed to talk. <laughs> because we came expecting to convey our grievances. They came to campaign. And that's what happened. So we got very few questions in. I would have loved to have heard from other Texans. And so, does anybody have anything to say that they would have liked to have said at that meeting? What would, you, what would you like to tell your representative to do? I know in our town, a lot of people don't like to stand up and talk. I know that. Um, but I know in our town that the, the, the border was a big concern. That's about the only thing that I, I got to listen to people uh, talk about. Does anybody, would anybody here like to speak during this segment? Or should I just go ahead and turn it over? Hmm? I believe that my um, city or uh, county taxes are too high. And that was one of the reasons I was um, leaning towards Deborah Medina was that she was in favor of reducing taxes, eliminating property taxes so that when you bought your property and you owned your property, you didn't have to pay for it every year when it came time to do so. Property taxes, big deal in Texas. I talked to Dan Flynn about that. And, uh, you know, he was not a Medina person. He was a Perry person. But uh, I, I wrote to him and, and suggested that we do away with property taxes. And his, his reply was that he does agree that if you own your property or your home is paid for, then you shouldn't have to continue paying taxes on it. At least he got that far. And I agree with that. That would be something. Uh, another thing that we have been working on here at the Texas Citizens Convention is land patents. Now, none of us have completed one, but the theory behind it is that back in the 1860s and 40s when land was granted here in Texas by the Texas Land Grant what what company or whatever yeah the Texas General Land Office granted land and then that in that grant they said in writing they give up all claims and rights to that property forever and it was granted in my instance to John C Reed and you have to trace the line from John C. Reed all the way up to you. I have that. And, if, and then I need to go in and apply for a land patent. It costs about $100. And um, you file for it at the, at the district, clerk, district clerk's office. And uh, I think the filing fee is $25. And um, in theory, how it's supposed to work 
is that you then would be taken, you have to uh, ask to be taken off the tax rolls because you own your property and the, the state has no claims to it. Uh, that what you do when you when you uh, get it taken off the tax rolls is you ask them to put your property value at zero, because your school taxes are a percentage of your property value. So percentage of zero is zero, and then up to you if you want to go to your school and contribute some money if if that's what you want to do. You'd also have to contact the the roads, uh, the 911, and see if there's any fees, but. But on down the line, that's what you need to really look at, is that you would be owning your property and they'd have a much, you know, this new world order is trying to take our property away from us. Like I just read to you, uh, the White House Rural Council, they're gonna try to come in and tell us how to do things. Um, well, you own your property and I've already talked to our sheriff here in Hunt County, Randy Meeks, and um, he, Paul and I had an audience with him uh, when they were working on that Obamacare. And uh, I, we personally asked him, we told him we're not gonna buy it and we're not gonna go to jail. And at the time, it had not been passed and they were talking about um, arresting people, remember that? Yeah. And uh, he said that he would tell those federal agents to leave us alone. So Randy Meeks is gonna protect us. Yes, he's not gonna let that happen to us. Um, so that's just some insight there. Uh, is anybody besides John not from Texas House District 2, Rains, Hunt, or Van Zandt? Um, I want to turn the microphone over now to Dr. John Cooper. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, uh, CC asked me to speak tonight on TSA, the anti-grouping law. Are y'all familiar with it, aren't you? Well, if you go to the airport, you may get more familiar with it. They may get familiar with you. That's sad because the anti-grouping law that we know today is unconstitutional. But let me tell you about my five basic things for me. First of all, let me say God is God. Now, whether I believe it or not, that doesn't make any difference. God's still God. Whether you believe it or not, it doesn't make any difference. God is still God. Number two, we're all going to die. Sooner or later, one of us is going to die. And there's, that's just the truth. And there's nothing we can do about it except to know we're going to die and prepare for it. Number three, we will give account of our lives when we stand before a living God. And we're responsible. Since we have free will, we're responsible for our actions of what we do. Now, I can digress from that just a little bit and say, okay, I can remember back in the 70s when I should have been standing up and I should have been protesting uh, the, the prayer out of school. I should have been protesting, taking the Bible out. I should have been protesting all of our rights. You know what I did? I did nothing. I didn't really know what was going on. I, was, I thought the separation of church and state meant the church stays in one place, the state stays in That's not true. That's not true. And so we are responsible. We have the free will to choose and reject what we want to do. And we also have the responsibility. We will stand accountable for our actions. Now, number four, we're responsible to obey the laws. We have the laws of the land, the laws of God, but we're responsible to obey not only God's law, but the law of the land. Now, what is the law of the land? In my books, the law of the land is the Constitution of the United States of America and it is based on 94% of the Bible is in the Constitution. So I have on one hand, I have my God on one hand that I serve. On the other hand, I have my Constitution, which is my given rights right here in the United States that I'm to uphold. And you and I have to uphold it. And I have been guilty of not standing up and defending it and protecting it like I should until 2008. Finally, the Lord got through to my thick head what I needed to do. And that's when I started standing up. We need to stand up. TSA needs to stand up. This group, this organization needs to stand up. You need to be counted. We've got to stand up to the government or he's going to overrun us. Now, just recently, uh, the, our legislature was going to vote on an amendment on this anti-grouping law and it was going to have the effect that all of the TSA officers would be fined $4,000 and could spend a year in jail for what they're doing. 
what the federal government do. Y'all know the story. I'm preaching to the choir. Federal government said, okay, great. We'll just cut off. You make your no-fly zone. Well, it scared everybody. What they do? They backed off. Well, now, but guess what? It's back on the agenda again, and it's going to be voted on tomorrow. So I'm hoping Texas will stand up to the federal government. If they don't, then we've got to. And then no, we got to anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, this federal government has overrun us. Now, we go to the Constitution. And uh, next Thursday night, if you come to Sulphur Springs to the PCN, we're starting a constitutional study. I'm going to preview just a little of it tonight because the anti-grouping law revolves around Amendment Number 4 to the Constitution. Let me read Amendment Number 4. Now, this is interpreted and uh, under the language of the uh, of the uh, dictionary of the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, okay? So this is a modern version based on the 1828 Dictionary. The people have the right to be protected from unreasonable searches and seizures and may not be violated. This protection includes their persons, houses, papers, and belongings. No warrant may be issued unless it is reasonably believed that a crime was most likely committed. This belief must be supported by a sworn statement and the warranty must specified, specifically describe the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. That is our constitutional right. That is the law of the land. That is the law of the Bible. And so that is what we are fighting today. Now, one of the things that CC was telling me a while ago is, did you know that Speaker Strauss, before he was elected speaker, did you know that he, all those uh, speakers or congressmen who would, who would be on his side, that he told them he would pay their campaign uh, funds, pay their campaign fees? Oh, is that better over there? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but she can't see me back. Okay, but so, okay, Speaker Strauss told those new congressmen that he would pay their campaign fund or their campaign expenses if they voted for him. Cece got this directly and we can, we can tell it because she's got it from a direct source. What does that say to you? That is bribery. That's impeachment. He should be impeached and not only that, but every congressman who takes a bribe should be impeached. Let's go to the White House. Every person in the White House who violates the Constitution who does not believe in the Constitution, who said we will protect, defend and uh, uh, the Constitution against all enemies and have not right now, as we stand, should be impeached. Now, that's just the way it should be. Our Constitution says that, and you read the first part of our Constitution when it was talking about all the issues we had was because the King of England would not listen to our pleas and to our cries and to our request for justice. And guess what? He turned a deaf ear. It's just like Obama administration has turned a deaf ear to everything we have said. Now, the Constitution is very clear. You need to read it. You need to study it. If we are going to hold our, our officers in the Congress, in the United States, and in the Senate, in the Texas Senate and the Congress, we need to know what they are supposed to do or we cannot hold their feet to the fire. And that's the reason why we've got to study the Constitution. I don't know it well enough, and I know that most people don't. Somebody here may be a, a student of it. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you right now, if we don't know it, we can't hold our feet to the fire because we don't know what they're supposed to do. And so this anti-groping law that I'm going to talk about for just a moment, I, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> the feds threatened to declare Texas a no-fly zone. The bill was passed. Okay? I had a friend who sent me an email. You know what he said? He said, Governor... Perry was a chicken. He was afraid to take on the federal government. And he said he would not put it back on the agenda in this special session. Guess what? It's back on the agenda. Perry put it on the agenda, so we've got to give him a plus for that. And he has it on the agenda. They're going to discuss it. It'll be voted on tomorrow. They must, our state representative must stand up. Let me tell you what I would do if I was governor of Texas. I would call every one of our representatives that represents the state of Texas. I would call them into a meeting. I'd call our senators into a meeting and every official we've got, I would say, boys, listen, there's a fight going on. We need to fight it. We're gonna have to fight it in Congress and we're gonna have to fight the federal government 
because they're in violation of the Constitution, which they themselves uh, claim to defend and protect. Now, that's just, that's just simple math. 